Hello, hello everybody. Good morning, good morning. This is my morning walk with Jesus. But today, I just want to share a word with you today. That what Jesus did, what heaven suffered, what the Father suffered, was enough. Now it's up to us to receive that gift, that sacrifice, that love that the Father poured out so wonderfully and so extravagantly through the Son. You see, there are so many things we can, we can decide to either take it or we can decide to let the enemy win. But one thing I've realized is that it is not by works lest any man should boast. You don't pay for your healing. It is not because you're very righteous, that's why you get healed. It is not because of the works that you do, that's why you get healed. Well, you can open doors for the enemy to come in. But see those doors that you're opening, Jesus already came and shut them. So there is a way you can possess that. You can take that. And you shut the doors that the enemy is coming in through into your life. But that doesn't stop God from healing you. And that is why when Jesus healed the sick, when he raised the dead, when he cleansed lepers, when he cast out demons, it was, it was, not, it was not conditional. It was not conditional at all. When he did that, he never said, you have to do this for me to heal you. In fact, some of them didn't even deserve it. According to him, he never came to heal the sick on the Gentiles. He came to the house of Israel. And how many people know that even that assignment was changed the minute the woman believed and she persisted and it is not because of who she was but it was because of who Christ was and who she believed he was and so today and every other day healing it's your choice it's already paid for you just have to go get it restoration deliverance it's your choice it's already paid for we don't even have to beg we don't even have to plead we don't have to like the woman she had to why because it wasn't for everybody but John 3 16 tells you that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever whosoever anyone it doesn't matter who you are boy girl old young jew gentile whosoever believes in him will not perish but they will have everlasting life so can you imagine how costly everlasting life is you know everlasting life you can have everlasting life only by believing in Christ, right? Working out your salvation, basically. Receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You receive him and you obey him, right? Because that's how, what you do to somebody who's your Lord. You listen to them and you obey them. You know you can be healed and still go to hell. Because healing is not a condition of eternal life. He healed people who were not saved. He healed people who are not Jews. He healed people who are not born again. He healed people. Why? Why does he heal? Just like that. Why give it just like that? It's like if I have a few dollars. And I just want to give them away. I just go and give to random people. They didn't work for me. They're not my friends. They didn't do anything to deserve it. It's just out of my will. I just want to give it. And that's how God is. He's a giver. He enjoys giving. So he just wanted to give. So he gave 
life to the dead. He healed the sick. He cleansed those who were lepers. And he brought, gave them back a, st a stand in the society. What is it going to be for you today? If he gave healing just like that, like candy. The Bible tells me that everyone that came to him was healed. They brought their sick. He healed all of them. Now, can you imagine if he started taking a tally? Who are you? Do you know me? Do you, do you believe in me? What if he started asking all these questions? Where are you from? What are you doing? What are you not doing? Morning. What if he started asking all those things? How many would he have healed? And how many would he have disqualified? The Bible says that all of them, all of them, anyone who came to him, including that leper guy who said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. He made him clean. So children of God, let me tell you, <laughs> it's your food. You can have it or not. And even if you're not a child of God, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, whenever you're, you're in the store and you're sampling something, good morning, and you're sampling something, they, when you enter and they want to sell something to you, they give you a little sample so that you can taste and see that it is good so you can go buy your own bunch, right? So even you who are not born again, you do not know Christ and you're sick. Come on, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. He's going to heal you. Yep, that is true. He's going to heal you. All right, let's pray. If you're in need of healing, this is it. It's a very simple scripture. It's in Isaiah. Very simple. But it is all inclusive. And that scripture is what I will quote to the sickness and disease in your body, in your spirit, in your soul. And it has to obey the word of God. Because when you go to the courts of heaven, when you go to court, you present your evidence. You present your case. And the judge rules. So this actually, this, this law is made, was made in effect after Jesus Christ was beaten up. It was not in effect before. But Christ, the healer, could heal and do all these great things even before this scripture came into effect. And now, children of God, this scripture is for every area of your life. And you who are not children of God, trust me, he's okay. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> He'll give it to you. Then you can come over to this side. Just have a taste of what we enjoy as being children of God, children of the Most High. All right, I'm going to quote this scripture. For every spirit, soul, and body, under the sound of my voice, or if you're deaf or dumb under this, the, the, the action, the spirits here, and that's who I'm speaking to. I'm speaking to those spirits that have kept you bondage. He was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. Transgressions are our sins. Iniquities are the sins of our forefathers. The chastisement of our peace was upon him you see when you're wounded when you have you your 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 sin you wound yourself you give the enemy a chance to wound you the transgressions bring wounding in your spirit in your soul in your body the iniquities which are the sins of our forefathers bring bruising in our lives in our spirit souls and bodies in your finances you get bruised and bruised bruises are not fun to look at and they're painful so he was wounded for our transgressions he took it all he was bruised for our iniquities he paid it all the chastisement of our peace you see when you you're wounded when you're bruised you don't have peace 
But he also said, because of that, I'm going to give you your peace back. So beat me up. The chastisement. He was chastised for your peace and for my peace. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his stripes, by his wounds, we were healed. By his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, I declare we are healed. Now receive your healing in the name of Jesus. This is the case that I've presented. That mountain of sickness and disease, of depression and suppression, of bruising in your finances, in your children, in your emotions, in your soul, in your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, move and go in be dumped into the sea you mountain and in Jesus name we receive wholeness through Jesus Christ our Lord thank you father for this law that you have put in effect and I thank you because Holy Spirit of God you make sure that it has been upheld in the spiritual realm in Jesus name we pray believe and receive with thanksgiving amen I love you all take care God bless you Join me again next time. And let's take a walk. Um, let me see if I can show you the lake so you can appreciate my, my beautiful view.